Good afternoon. It's afternoon. I'm about to say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is the afternoon. It is 12 noon here in New York City, and we are live for another exciting um, presentation uh, brought to you by FIT. The broadcast is in collaboration with the Office of Education and in uh, Office of Education Opportunity Programs at FIT. To Orange is the director, and we want to thank her and FIT for helping us to bring this broadcast to you. Today is a very special broadcast. You know, last week we did Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse and finances and how finances affects your health. And now we're going to get into something really, really exciting. Um, somebody who I adore, one of my favorite people in the world who I've had the opportunity to interview before. And um, I want to just jump right into it because I have this woman is waiting and she is outstanding. Sit back, hold on to your seats. You're going to get some information and learn about some things you probably never thought about. She always brings me something else to think about every year, and I'm always like, wow, I didn't think about that. Uh, I'm going to bring on to, to the screen right now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Dr. Jewel Krugram. Dr. Jewel, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. You know, I've been zooming through the air when I'm zooming hundreds of miles here. My body has to take some time to catch up, so okay. it's, it's catching up, but... Uh, uh, mentally and my soul and everything right here with you, Mr. Matt. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to jump into this because you got a lot to talk about, as always, and a lot of information to share, which unfortunately we can't even cover 1% of, of the knowledge that I have in, in one hour. But first of all, let's start off by giving the, the world and, and the viewers your background. Because you are a medical doctor, and you ain't just making stuff up. You have a history and of science and information on a high level. So tell everybody your background real quick, and then we'll start from there. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I thought we weren't going to spend a lot of time on that. But it's just real important. Yes, I am. It's a, a quick overview. <laughs> okay, yes. I am a um, well-cultivated medical doctor. Um, initially, I was trained in surgery. A gynecologic surgery, and I advanced from there to family practice, and from there I went into alternative medical practices. I got an advanced degree in uh, herbology and plant sciences, and from there then I continued my research uh, in plant science and nutrition. So therefore, practicing for about almost 40 years, in uh, family practice, we recognized that it was more than one body that we had to accommodate, not just the physical body, but the emotional body and the spirit body of a human body that is innovated by an energy that we refer to as the soul. So you have the soul body, the core energy that allows life to exist in the body. And that energy frequency that your soul emanates through the mental sphere and the emotional sphere is what creates your spirit. And that then gives the tissues the clue and the indication as to what is to do. So this is what turns on and off the DNA. So we talk about activating genes, take turning genes off. It is your spirit, which is the culmination of your mental body and your emotional body that basically turns this on and off in conjunction with the energies in your environment. So they talk about the energies in your environment now as being what? Epigenetics means it's on top of the genes, that it actually can actually also modulate your genes, turn them off or turn them on, even though you may want a different expression of activity and capability from your body. So that's why we have all of these bodies that we have to deal with and still present science is not addressing these crucial compositions of the human, which is why we still have so much disease, why it's chronic and why we are still doing what? Dying. Now I'm going to take a real big running step, Mr. Mack, and announce the truth. The truth is we're immortal. Okay? Mm. We are immortal. And when we can interact and allow those bodies that we have to stay harmonious 
and mm -hmm. interbraided properly, human tissue does not die. So I'm just going to say this one statement. Proof of what I said is the whole science of cadaver medicine. We've got hundreds of thousands of people in line waiting for so-called dead organs. How can they be dead and be put into a person who's extremely wow. sick and they get better if the organ was really dead? Wow. So I'm going to put that on your mind because in that dealing with energies now is critical for us to be able to condense all of these wonderful capabilities that our historians have shown us through their fortitude, their persistence, their focus, what they were able to do to bring us to the present. But what are we in the present going to do with all of that information endowed in our genes as melanated people and move to our present future? And we okay. have a real crisis right now. Let you me know, stop I'm, you right there for one second. I'm going to stop you one second right there. Because so, now you get the so today's topic is the history and legacy of illness in the black community okay. so based on what you just said uh a minute ago am i to surmise that western medicine has taken a narrow view on health especially when it comes to melanated people a narrow view on health and got rid of the spiritual aspects in our spiritual bodies and our spiritual beings and, and our uh soul um and only concentrated on the, the physical body and not even doing okay, that. Well, they didn't get rid of it. They just don't have the innate capabilities of acknowledging and interacting with it. So therefore they really don't have, they didn't have much of a choice but to ignore it out of ignorance and the incapability of interacting with it. And this is the crisis as to why we talk about melanin and, and melanin recessive individuals and their capacity to interact with the full electromagnetic spectrum. Now we have people now, historians as a matter of fact, you know, George Washington Carver, you know, fabulous, uh, uh, what I call a, a, a botanist, okay, but he was really a, a, a photon master of dealing with the light and the life force in plants. Okay, but still in all, you know, we think about, about him as the peanut and the oil. But that's like little baby stuff compared to what he left us. Okay, but when you don't have the capacity genetically and biologically to interact with high vibratory frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum to you, it doesn't exist. And so when we have a science of medicine that is predominated by a group of people who admit that they have a restriction, a limitation in melanin content, there's so much of the electromagnetic spectrum that they can't process because the amount of melanin that they have is limited. Okay. So, so this is the problem that they, they, they cannot uh, interact with higher frequencies of life and life forms because of this deficiency that they have expressed through their tissues. It also does affect the state of consciousness and the function of the brain. But what I, what I want to say is this, and historically, let's bring it forth. Where did humanity come from? Okay, we know for a fact that all of humanity originated from the uterus and the growing of a melanated female and male. The Smithsonian Institute keeps a video that demonstrates the paleontological, the uh, archaeological genetic proof that all humans originated from a melanated female and male in Africa. And they keep this video. So when you go there and ask, where, where did humans come from? That's what they show you. Now, if you and I are the direct descendants of the mother of all civilization, the father of all civilization, in proof of our melanin, okay, then now we have to look at how does the diversity in this expression of melanin, and that's our pigment. I'm going to say it again, because why don't we have this word pasted everywhere? You go around saying you're black, you're white, you're Hispanic. We're talking about melanin and its capacity to infuse you with life force energy and knowledge and information 
it's critical that we understand that. And each and every one of us has selected at the soul level the amount of melanin that our body is going to possess. So therefore, nobody's a victim because you are fabulously navy blue black or that you're a victim because you have very little melanin. You did this at the soul level. Mm. But see, now this takes you through the whole stratum of how thought and comprehension is present in all of our different bodies that is not addressed in con conventional standard medicine. They're still, you know, uh, tinkering with uh, what the brain can or cannot do. And now we recognize we do have a mind and we now recognize that, you know, we do have an energetic that determ determines, determines whether certain thoughts and capabilities are functioning. But that life force energy that irradiates from everywhere coming from one primal source, which is the soul, the God of all things, whatever you want to label it, is a part of each and every one of us. So therefore, we have a crisis now. Historically, we know that the mother and father were black. Richard King, for example, another historian of black history who was able to talk about the black dot. And he talks about the fact that all genes are covered with melanin, that everything has to come through melanin before it can actually have a life form in this dimension. Now, so he let was me stop. Yeah. I will stop you there again, if you don't mind. And, uh, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everybody kind of gets the full grasp of this. I've heard this before, and I, you know, I'm still grasping with it myself on a lot of levels. But, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the melanin, because we talked about it before or, uh, a couple of days ago, melanin then that means when we're dealing with the topic of, you know, the history and legacy of um, illness in the black community, melanin is our, is the life-giving force of who we are and that fed by the sun. That's why the sun is so important for people to get out into the sun and get sun. Well, let, me just, let me just give you the scientific expression of yeah. what melanin is. Melanin is the biological intracellular form of the sun. It is nothing but the total electromagnetic spectrum condensed in the three-dimensional realm as a pigment. And that pigment is known as melanin. It has different wavelengths in its physical form that we call pigments or chromatin bodies or particular physical structures that we give a, a color to chroma like chroma uh, chlorophyll for example is radiating the spectrum here of 400 to 500 nanometers here which is in the electromagnetic spectrum but to the eye it appears to be green and we know how vital that is but the point is that color is information Color is energy, and we have a substance in every cell of our body to extract and process the information as well as the energy that every color exudes in and on our presence. And that is known as melanin. And it's important as it is because it is a physical manifestation of the sun. Why wouldn't that be pasted everywhere? You should see melanin everywhere, on your forehead, on the TVs, the radio, et cetera. But there is literally a repression of this kind of knowledge of self to be available to what appears to be the majority of people who possess this in high content and concentration. Which then, which then leads us, it takes us back to the history and legacy of illness in our community. We are, we're ill because we're taking the wrong things into our body, not getting enough sun, not understanding our relationship spiritually and physically to the sun and all the other elements. Plants die, it's just no sunshine. Well, and you have to, die. but you have to understand also that the institutions, like again, we talked about Western medicine not being able to rise to the occasion of all of these aspects of ourselves energetically, but this is also a main issue. As ill as people have been, as supposedly advanced as science has come in medicine, 
why don't they have a simple test to evaluate the energetic activity of melanin. All these people with melanin come into it. We can give you a blood test and tell you what blood type you are, if you're Rh positive or negative, but you've got a whole body dripping with melanin and they can't have one test that say, oh, your melanin is underactive, it's overactive. These are the wavelengths of, of light that your melanin is, which is critical. The reason why many of the diseases we don't succumb to unless we come out of using the pharmaceutical drugs and we turn back to what? Treating ourselves with components of melanin in the plants. We, we don't survive it because they are not looking at the core issue of where all the energy emanates in the body. And it comes from this melanin biopolymer. Now, one of the present scientists and authors who talks about this Dr. Tim Owens Moore. So he's been a teacher at uh, Clark Atlanta University. He's taught at Morehouse. He's written at least 10 or 12 books on melanin. And you would think that his work, as important as it is for the present and future viability of melanated people, would be saturated throughout our community and through all out the world. Two thirds of the world is melanated and they need that knowledge. But why is it when we're looking at educational systems, we're looking at publication systems, et cetera, that appear to be melanin recessive owned and directed, they don't actually disperse and advertise this kind of knowledge to the people who are dependent on using it. So information is there. My, my book that I wrote, I wrote this book 25 years ago as the baby primer for melanated people worldwide to understand melanin and how important it was. And I just knew that in America, there was going to be 20 million copies. We had that many people here. And I'm telling you, most people still do not know the vitamins, <laughs> minerals, and the lifestyle necessary to keep your melanin healthy. And this is written over 25 years ago. So can you show them a little copy of that book, et cetera? Yes, because so this is one of the, this is the main reason we talk about health in the uh, melanated communities. You don't know what and how to care for the very essence that controls the life and the energy in your body. How to care for it, and that is melanin. Right. So it's not just what we refer to as black, black, black. Melanin, which happens to be black when the eye looks at it, is all colors. Do you understand? You have to, if, you were, if you're an artist and you took all of the colors, red, green, blue, yellow, etc., and put them all together, you're going to get black. But see, if you use the term melanin, now you get into the science, the quantum physics of why this is black, because you are dealing with so much energy and life force. So the word black actually negates right. the power and the understanding of what you have spoken of. You know what, and, and as you're talking, there's so many things, you know, I would have said, oh, you know, we talked a little while ago before we came on and something I never really remembered or, or realized we were talking about Stan Lee and, you know, Marvel Comics and um, we talked about Black Panther and then we talked about, the, you know, of gamma, you know, the gamma ray is, is, is another energy force that, you know, uh, flows through our, our, our body. And I'll say, wait a second, remember, the Incredible Hulk was infused with gamma rays, which is why he became the Hulk. And then you remind me, what color did he turn? He turned it a green, dark green color, which is melanin. It, you know, exactly. It, the chlorophyll was activated, I think you said. Yes. And the chlorophyll molecule that is in all the plants that are green, et cetera, is that pigment is the first cousin of melanin. You understand? It has a tremendous amount of power in it, but not as powerful as the actual melanated plants. And we do have what? Black roses. We have black leaf trees. We have beautiful. They're very maroon, uh, black in color. Those plants have so much energy in them because they are holding the entire spectrum of light as we know it in the electromagnetic spectrum. 
So the key here is now present future. What are we going to do now? I shared this with you behind stage, um, Mr. Mack, how we have to now stay present knowing all the things that have happened, all the wonderful scientists, intellectuals, politicians, researchers, manufacturers that have endowed us with information in our genes. But we have a crisis right now. That crisis is, it appears as though there's going to be a world war on our planet. And so as of today, we have Two, two of the largest nations here that are bickering with warheads on earth right now, the Ukraine and Russia. There's also intense rumor where China, a second large mm -hmm. continent on our planet and right. its population are also getting ready to have a feud with weapons with Taiwan. That means that's almost half of the surface area on planet Earth with its population now doing very harmful things to each other. Now, how can that be eradicated? Now, one of the things that is very important to know, they have a gamma ray index. OK, mm -hmm. they have a gamma ray index. When we have a decent weather report, they're going to tell you what the intensity of gamma ray is today. OK, why? Because. People who are melanin recessive do not have enough melanin to actually process healthfully the energy in gamma. But now it's very interesting that those individuals who are melanated in our uh, society that is what we call you melanated, that they are the black, the navy blue, black, black. Okay. Gamma ray, they eat that every day. What is so powerful about gamma ray? It is the fastest traveling energy wavelength that has the most information. Mm. And when you are built in such a way that your brain can process this energy, that you can put a thought in gamma ray and send it through space so fast, just by thinking it, that all tissue, all other forms of living tissue have to pay attention and process the content of what gamma ray is carrying. <clears throat> so let, so let me ask you this on in processing information. And uh, uh, since we do have the issue of uh, the history of illness is our illnesses in our community due to the lack of us processing properly the uh, our, our melanated need for certain and types of energy and foods, and then those types of food that we do eat that lowers the vibration of the energy that, that, that we have naturally. And so our bodies get sick. We get weak, we get sick, we get diseased. Um, I remember, you know, when I first uh, heard you speak 30 years ago, whatever, whatever it was, um, and you taught, I tell you, I, I, I never forget, and I always bring this up, how you talked about the vibration of our bodies and that we are able to regenerate our limbs but we just forgot how or we destroy that part of us that is that that will enable us to to do so so we, we've dumped we down our bodies not, a lot through western medicine right we have not completely activated our dna Mm -hmm. in our body. We have something known as a genome. And that genome has all of this genetic information in it, like a suitcase. Okay. We have so much genetic information that is necessary to be active and functional in a melanated body. Mm -hmm. And most of that in a melanated body is dormant. So if a body is built to do A, B, C, and D, they tell us that, for example, I built this car, you know, using autom autom automotives. I built this car to travel on the average of 70 miles an hour. It can travel from 70 miles an hour to 200 miles an hour. Uh, you, be, you buy the car, but you only travel only 45 miles an, uh, an hour in it. Mm -hmm. You don't go any place or do anything that requires mm -hmm. you to travel at 70, 80, 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And then you will find the car sluggish. For whatever reason, it mm -hmm. stops and starts, you know, 
it doesn't hum like it used to. Is the car the problem when you knew when you bought it from the beginning? It was what? A high performance right. car. Right, right. And right. you did not expose it to the environment and mm-hmm. treat it the way that was necessary for all of the capabilities that it was t- supposed to what? Experience. Right, right, right. This is what is happening with the melanated bodies. They are high performance. And the information, whether it comes through the food, whether it comes through your thoughts, whether it comes through your daily activities, is not enough to keep activated and integrated all of these information Mm -hmm. in your body that is needed to maintain it at a high performance. You see what I'm saying? Right. So the part, the problem with the illnesses in Two thirds of the world population is not primarily because of food. It's primarily because of the lack of knowledge to know how to run and sustain a high performance body. Mm. Even the medical system that we go to that has been offered to us by melanin recessive individuals does not teach you that one, you have a high performance body, mm. two, they don't basically give you the instruction on how to maintain it mm-hmm. because in that they won't even discuss melanin with you. They don't even have a test to actually uh, evaluate the amount of melanin, the amount of energy that's in your tissues, even though they know about it. Now, see, this was the clincher, and that's why I put it in my book, mm-hmm. that they have spent billions of dollars researching melanin, that They've been researching melanin since the 1600s. So why don't you have books all around in the communities about melanin? Why don't you have books that basically really are telling all that you discovered since the 1600s on this molecule that you've been researching? They say nothing. And that is the incriminator, that this is not something that you don't know about. This is not something that you haven't invested in. You have all this information, but yet and still, you do not share it with the people who possess it. Okay. Now, and and, and you mean that's, that's on purpose? That's on purpose? Well, I don't see it any other way. It's not mm-hmm. taught to us in medical school. It's mm-hmm. not taught to us in research unless you're in specific research areas, mm-hmm. okay? People who think that they're well-educated, they may have JDs and PhDs, they don't know anything about melanin, okay? So why is all this information repressed when you have millions of articles pushed mm-hmm. on it and also archived in only certain areas of your research? Mm-hmm. So you have to understand that this information has been sequestered. Mm-hmm. And so you say that you have the highest research. Okay, well, why don't you release all this information that you've discovered on melanin, period. The world needs to know this. Melanin recessive individuals who they call themselves Caucasian, they need their melanin tested because mm-hmm. if their uh, melanin becomes even more inactive, they can't sustain their own health. And this is mm-hmm. part of the reason why they have the diseases they have that Melanated people don't have, like the you know cystic fibrosis and all these. It's rare for melanated people to have those things, but they won't even acknowledge that they have this information. Period. Worldwide, in regards to humans, and we need to have all the information possible because we have a situation that, for our present future, has to be changed, and the only way it can be changed is we've got to increase the quality of thought and to be able to exchange these thoughts in a higher frequency of light. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. this is a problem. We don't, it's not about who has the biggest bomb. It's about who is exchanging information in a frequency of energy that definitely the body now can function at a whole new level when it gets this information. When people really know the health of melanin, that they have it, how it works, et cetera, they now function at a different level because they know they have potentials that are just innate. 
but they didn't know that they were sitting right there in every cell of their body. Mm. So, um, other than what are the what are the and uh, and I'm not going to say simple solutions, but what are some of the solutions that we can as a people stop that legacy of illnesses in our community? How can we, you know, um, other than you know, and, and and I suggest everybody take Dr. Jewel's um, courses. I'm going to put them back up in a minute. You can go to her websites and join and uh, take her courses and learn how, how to vibrate on a different frequency and to activate your melanin uh, that will help you get it in. The, and and I love your analogy about the car, the high performance car, and that we have high performance bodies, uh, which is you know, right. oftentimes how we run faster, jump higher. <laughs> It'll do things because it is a and like you said, if you have a car that is a high performance car, car and don't as a mechanic would say, you gotta blow it out every once in a while. You gotta let it run and and do what it does to to work properly. Or else it's stalling you. It won't work. And our so called athletes who have demonstrated some of the qualities of a high performance body mm -hmm. still are not balanced with the intellect, the knowledge of what makes that body high performance. Mm. And that's why they don't have the health and the longevity, more so for them, the longevity. A body like that can live indefinitely, but mm. they don't have the knowledge to know how to treat it so that mm. it has that kind of longevity. But it goes so it, back, you're, what you just said though, you, we can live indefinitely. Um, yeah. Is is because remember if you know if you uh, if you believe what you read in the Bible that people live 400, 500 years and you were living all the all, all this period of time having kids at three hundred years old and you know so forth and so on that's living indefinitely there you know so again it goes back to we've dumbed down our bodies in some form of way and stopped understanding how we live properly and that's because our melanated uh, our melanated skin is not activated properly. So we're not performing properly. Correct. And that's why, again. You got muted. You got muted. Oh, this is the basic, the cover of the book. Show them the book because this is the basic primer that allows them to know about the basic care for a melanated body. You mm. uh, made some uh, into windows about that. We need sunlight. Yes, we do. We need to live in a more open air society. That is to say that to be able to have access to fresh air, that we should never sleep in rooms that are totally sealed off, that don't have adequate circulation. We do not do well with tinted anything. We do not need tinted glasses on our uh, in front of our eyes. We do not need clothes that have chemical dyes and additives to them that block out sunlight. No. Vitamin D, for example, is very important for us, but what type of vitamin D? Okay, so they have found out that melanated people make a type of vitamin D that is not well made and in some varieties of humans is not even produced in the melanin recessive body. So they did a lot of this research in South Africa and they found out that the South Africans make a different type of vitamin D than they do. Mm -hmm. Now, what I thought was so interesting is that they decided that they would change the standard of vitamin D that humans should exhibit. And they now are using their standard of the type of vitamin D that they make as being what everybody should produce. So Can now- Can we talk about vitamin D for a minute? Because vitamin, vitamin D, I find it hard to find just vitamin D. You can find D3, you can find all, Oh, well, the vitamin, vitamin D was hard. well, when you uh, when you expose yourself to sunlight, or you expose yourself to uh, vitamin D that's been made by other animals like cod, codfish, cod liver oil, all the varieties are there. So this is what I'm saying: the type that is uh, more prolific in the production of the melanin recessive body, mm -hmm. as they call themselves, Caucasians they are now saying that the standard of vitamin D should be their type of vitamin D, which is not appropriate for a melanated person who makes a little bit of theirs 
but a lot of all the other forms of vitamin D that all they have to do is again, sunlight, okay? Eat green leafy vegetables, eat what? Seaweeds. They don't tell you there's a lot of vitamin D in sea vegetables. And also to a fish, if you're a fish eater, the, the uh, cod, fish, the vitamin D is natural, but they're now only pushing their form of vitamin D instead of the overall collection of vitamin D that we make. And as long as we're not investing in our own labs, we're not investing and in make sure that we have our own research facilities and our own hospitals, we can't establish for ourselves a standard we can rely on that is going to directly support what we need. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's very important that we start doing that. And I would like to see that as part of the new present history of melanated people, that we recognize that we need a evaluation standard that, first of all, recognizes melanin. Once we are saying that, you know, we don't care what other tests you do, but we're going to have a test that indicates whether our melanin is healthy or not. So and you cannot seriously say that you can treat my body if you can't even measure mm-hmm. the health of my melanin in that is saturated throughout my body. Right. See, if we can get that sophisticated just by reading that basic book, now we can make a change in our health because the health of many people is not dependent on whether they can have access to pharmaceutical drugs. They need access to light. They need access to basically more water. We need more water. They need access to be able to know that this body is created to be used, okay? That we need movement. That we need to be out in fresh air. We need to be with plants, etc. And that in no way is an interference with the inner city. We just recognize that in our inner city, this is one reason why I like the Atlanta area because it's what they call an urban forest. There's all kinds of people live through here, but there's enough trees, okay? There's enough plants and flowers to sustain melanated people very well. Right. So we have to basically start recognizing what does our constitution need for us to be healthy? And that has to be our foundation as to how we we create our environments, what we have in our stores, what we're going to eat, et cetera. But we don't know what that is for us because we've been trailing and pantomiming what works for somebody else, another group of us. You have to understand that there's only one human species on the planet, mm-hmm. but there are variations mm-hmm. of that species. Okay. And our melanin recessive or Caucasian variant, it's called a race variant, not a race, has different needs than the race variant that is melanin dominant. And so again, T. Owens Moore, Dr. T. Owens Moore, Richard King, Dr. Carol Barnes, all of these individuals have written about this intensely, but their work is not promoted throughout the melanated community as it's needed because without this melanin and to know how to take care of it, you will suffer because you're going to institutions where this dominant characteristic in you is not honored. It's right. not evaluated. And so Don't this is one of the illness in black community. That's right. the legacy is that we're not exactly. following our diet plan. It's exactly. Our diet plan. And we are not evaluating our bodies and what it needs for health. We're using someone else's template for their bodies, but not for ours. Okay, we have skin that is incredible. It doesn't fold, it doesn't wrinkle, it doesn't crack as readily as individuals who have melanin uh, recessive uh, qualities in the skin. But now, are we fostering and promoting that in our communities? No, we're not. Most of these products and things that you see they have all kinds of chemicals that you, most people can't spell and know the meaning of it, except what we need, body oils, hmm. minerals. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Here you go. Can hear you. Are you, can you hear me? I hear you now. I hear you now. I hear you. Okay. But I can't see you. Oh, here we are. We're yeah, back. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, so I that's hope, it. Just a, I hope that was in Ukraine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I think so. Then you know, it, I, I think it gets down to again. It's so we're following a, a a different plan that's not a plan devised for us. us. Um, and our well-being. So thus, you know, we can't be surprised that we're sick or not performing up to our capacities because we're not putting the right fuel it, on, on our skin, first of all. And then we're not putting the right fuel oftentimes with, with, within our bodies. We're lacking something that we need specifically to 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 live in the manner in which we're supposed to live and, and to uh, thrive and create the way we're supposed to live. Uh, I just want to, to let everybody know Oh, that you guys, if you want to log in and um, you want to ask questions of, of Dr. Jewel, please do. Um, the questions here, I think we have a technical issue. I think I lost Dr. Jewel for a minute. Hold on. Let me try and get her back. One second. Dr. Jewel, you there? Okay, we got you. Okay. Um, so let's go back to let's let's go back to the to the book again. Um, give me one second. Get us back to the book. So. Uh, vitamins and minerals from vitamins and minerals from A to Z. So, with ethno consciousness, see, it's different. Yeah, ethno consciousness, right. right? So those, so those vitamins and minerals are, are essential to how our body reacts or or doesn't react to illnesses and diseases and foreign substances that shouldn't be in our body. That 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 would make us sick. The you vitamins know, and minerals. Whatever. The vitamins and minerals that we reference here are to prevent imbalances, to prevent loss of energy, to sustain high frequency integration of energies within the melanated cell. And that's why I put this book together because there was no vitamin and mineral reference for how does a person with melanin treat and care for their body. It's always just, you know, take one a day this or uh, whatever they have available, but it's not titrated for a melanated body, which requires different nutrients in different concentrations. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, this is why I wrote this book, because when I was doing my research for my PhD, I was like, well, yeah, this is fine for melanin recessive individuals, but what about for melanin dominant individuals? Mm -hmm. For example, diabetes in the melanated individuals are, are African Americans, as well as our Hispanic people, we are just riddled with that. But one of the main reasons why we're riddled with it is because the mineral deficiency. We need minerals. And one of the main minerals that we need is what? Chromium. Chromium, Chromium is known as the glucose tolerance factor. If you don't have chromium in the bloodstream, the insulin cannot be recognized by the cell. So you can make as much insulin as you want to, but with chromium deficiency, the cells will not be able to recognize that there's insulin there to help them metabolize the glucose. Mm. So you would think that there would not be a diabetic here that you would not be on a mineral supplement containing chromium. Mm. Most of my colleagues don't even mention it. And they are not put on mineral supplementation. Now, one of the problems with glucose or sugars is that it uses up the B vitamin. It uses up certain minerals to be processed. That needs to definitely be supplemented. So the people who love sweets, they love carbohydrates, that is one of the things that they have to recognize they've got to put back in their diet on a regular basis. Minerals. So still in all, most people don't recognize the importance of mineral supplements. We have a lot of melanin dominant individuals who now are on the quote, alkaline water kick. And so they're all saying that we wanna keep the blood alkaline. This, it should be alkaline at certain times. For example, we know that your absorption of your minerals has to occur in the digestive tract that is what? in a slightly acid environment. Okay. So if blood becomes too alkaline, then the intestines is going to become alkaline and you're not going to absorb minerals because minerals have to have a slightly acid environment. Mm. So we have lots of people that are taking all this alkaline water and they're all alkalinized and they're losing their minerals. It's going right out of their body. 
because the digestive tract cannot absorb minerals in an alkaline environment. Mm. So these are the kind of details that have to be given to people before they can just get on these um, tirades of doing things without understanding what's the consequence. But diabetes, you've got to have minerals, you've got to have that calcium, that uh, chromium, the glucose tolerance factor. Okay, yeah. so yeah, I mean, diabetes is, is a major thing in the black yes, community, it is. and uh, and you see, and, and, I, and I, I've heard that before about chromium. Um, how much chromium does somebody take a day or week? Is it you know, is it something that should be a part of our regular? Well, it can, it can vary depending upon the severity of your disease or just minimize. I, you know, I'm, I'm not looking, we have that in the table in that book. I'm not looking at it right now. I, I, I don't know how many micrograms it is. I want to say 80, but it's right there to uh, certify. But the point of it is, is that we need minerals overall as melanated people. What are you doing for your mineral supplementation? And this is why eating iris moss, Okay, from the sea, eating sea vegetables, etc. I'm eating the sea moss as we speak. So, <laughs> yeah, it's excellent for mm -hmm. replacing minerals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know when we look at other cultures, our field melanated cultures, our Asians that live right there, for example, in Japan, they rely almost forty percent on sea vegetables. They don't have these kind of problems on the average. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have other things, but not this. Okay. Our mercury have a lot of problems with mercury poisoning, and that's for many reasons, because again, many of these inner cities, their water is pumped through lead piping, okay, mm -hmm. before it comes to your house. And then your house has got lead piping in it, so you just get a double dose of lead. They're not talking to us about that. They have finally said that we know we need to tear up the streets and the delivery system from the purification plants to the house needs to be uh, upgraded, but look at them. They're bickering as to whether they're gonna pay for it in Congress, but you still have to drink it every day until they decide that. No, these are things that we just cannot tolerate. So if we have to have filtration systems in our home, we do, that that water cannot go directly to your cooking. It cannot go directly to you drinking without being filtered. Well, we just have to deal with that until everybody can come together and we can clean out the whole water filtration system in our inner city. But you've got to filter your water. So we can't say, well, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to paint a water company and whatever else. Well, you know, if you don't want to pay for filtered, uh, filtered uh, water, then you're going to pay a hospital bill mm -hmm. until we can all come together to get this water straightened out because water is a serious problem for us because it has so many heavy metals that blocks melanin, not production, but it blocks actually the health of the melanin being able to release the light frequencies that it carries because they get lowered with having to deal with the heavy metals mm -hmm. in the cell. Okay. Interesting. We have questions. Say it again. Was that last part you said? Do we have any questions? Uh, we don't have any questions as of yet, but people, please feel feel free. We have a few minutes left, so um, if you do have a question, you know, please feel free to do that. Uh, but it, it's it's interesting to me. You talked about we spend more money on medical bills than anything else, I think, and we don't realize it. Most of us, especially after you get to a certain age, when your body really just just gives up because you just you know put it through hell for 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 forty years or more, and uh, your body says, "All right, I'm sick." I can't deal with this no more. And we spend so much time in the doctor's office or so much energy and, and money on medical bills if we just corrected our, our diets from the beginning. Teach ourselves. But again, I think you, you said something earlier to me that struck a nerve. We don't. Ha we need our own schools, our own hospitals that teach us how to take care of ourselves. We need more doctors but also, than others. But, but we want to also... Because it's okay to uh, have support. Sure. We are learning again after such a, uh, a devastating experience such as enslavement. We're learning how to trust again, how to work together again, how to build together again for ourselves. And we definitely want to consult with individuals who have studied intensely, 
who proclaim that they have the information mm -hmm. and we have to make sure that they are accurate and capable of doing what they say. Mm -hmm. When we go to the institutions where we know those individuals haven't spent time studying with us, that they haven't spent time investigating what I need specifically versus what someone else in the, in the suburbs okay. may need, et cetera, we are throwing our money away. Okay. So we have to make sure that we spend our money with people who have invested in understanding mm -hmm. you and are able to give you and your specific um, physiology and anatomy, the information and the recommendations that will build you up. So I've seen that a lot of people, they go to individuals, you look uh, back at their history, they don't know anything about uh, the uh, melanated uh, race variant. They, don't, they haven't studied any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they give them all yeah, they're giving you all this stuff that works for melanin and recessive individuals or whatever, but it's not for you. And we know, for example, I just, when I wrote this book, there was no such thing as vitamins and minerals for men and women mm. because that's what drove me to write the book. Why do they think that uh, men and women can take the same vitamins? We have a body that has different demands, has different needs. It functions different in many ways. So we need supplementation to support these variations in function. Well, and that's, that's why I said that, you know, a one a day vitamin as it used to be sold for 40 years was inadequate for the present day human. So now we have, if you're a teenager now, we've got a vitamin and mineral for it. If you're uh, an adult, if you're what they call a senior citizen, if you're a male or you're female, now if you're an athlete, you know, there's a vitamin for you if you're so I'm like, well, uh, somebody's listening to me. OK, that we have to basically address people in the different stages of their evolution, as well as the different uses as to how they're going to use their body at a particular uh, duration of their lifespan. So I'm saying that now the next thing is we have to recognize that melanated people need a different type of vitamin with different ratios of minerals in it, different concentrations of fatty acids that are important. We need fats. Part of the problem is with the immune system. They went on a campaign for some reason and told people, low fat diet, low fat diet, don't eat fat. And then now we have a, uh, an epidemic here. We, we, we literally uh, have this plague and mm -hmm. I said it was initiated because they told people to decrease the fat in their diet. When the only way you can have an adequate immune system, you have to have adequate fatty acids. Mm -hmm. Fatty acids are very important to help build the immune system. Mm -hmm. Now, am I talking about deep fried lard? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm talking about the very important uh, epigenoic acids, uh, uh, Omega six and three and nine, etc. That's not being stressed in our community because we need those things for our immunity. If we had proper minerals and vitamins, etc., that would come to pass. Okay. Okay. We had a couple of questions. I'm gonna try to get them in as we can. The time is running out. Um, PC, uh, she asked. So Seymour has a proper balance of minerals that suggest uh, that you suggest for health based on your medical findings. Yes, sea moss works very well with. Sea moss has ninety percent of all the of, of all the minerals your body needs. Ninety five. I know, because we, we came from the sea. Okay, yeah. that yeah. fluid in the amniotic uh, that liquid in the amniotic uh, uh, sac that we had to build our bodies in definitely had to have the same constitution as just about seawater. Yes, okay. so, so it has um, no amount of minerals in it, but. Most people don't even take baths now. I was doing a little survey and I found that people were like a bath. They had to think about it. They like, we don't even take a bath maybe once a year. But wow. it took nine months for you to basically build a body totally saturated in water. How could you then step away from water and think that you're going to be able to sustain something that had to be even created in water before it could exist in air? Okay. Uh, we got another question uh, from Brian asks, what minerals are good for blood pressure? Well, now that's a very interesting thing because uh, the melanated 
population of our human race hasn't really been told the truth about high blood pressure. Mm. Check, this, check this out and listen to me very carefully, Mr. Williams. High blood pressure is a reflection of an incongruency, an incompatibility between the emotional body and the mental body. And we are finding out that with so many melanated people that are not on purpose, they're chasing money, they're doing all these other different things, but they're not basically being true to the self. So how many black people, well, I really, really love this, that, and the other. Okay, well, what are you doing? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, you know, I have to do that on my spare time because I got to get over here and do X, Y, and Z. Do you think that your tissues are already programmed for you to be what you know you love doing, that you can put that to the side, and then your tissues are going to be healthy for you to do that when you've already admitted you're not important enough for me to do what I created you to do. I'm going to override what you're talking about with something else for something else outside of me, like money. And why do you think now that your pressure, the pressure in your tissues is not going to rise when you have denied them their very reason for existence. Mm -hmm. The second problem with high blood pressure is that drinking this poisonous water, high levels Mm -hmm. of calcium, of cadmium, high levels of lead uh, in the water, et cetera, that basically blocks our arterial system. And another thing, third reason, is that we have a dual circulatory system. We have a well-developed deep circulatory system of arteries and veins, and we have a secondary arterial system through the skin. Mm. And so therefore we have definitely a 30% of our blood is always in the skin area as well as then deep. So now do what do we do to help the arterial system under the skin? And I will say this over and over again, once you are... Uh, beyond seven years old, you should be scrubbing your skin with a brush. No more washcloths for a child, adolescent, and an adult body. You have to scrub it because that moves the lymphatic system. It also stimulates arterial uh, movement. It, uh, It stimulates drainage of the veins and the fat. So all of that now is basically cleansed when you scrub with a brush. So a lot of people see all these molds on the skin that they have they're called seborrheic keratosis. It comes from not adequately deep breathing the skin using a brush or a very rough surface. So all the, the dead cells pile up, the fat and sweat can't be released, and it looks like a mold. But that comes from really not thorough cleansing. That will also increase high blood pressure because so many of the arterioles Venials in the skin circulatory system have become clogged. Interesting. Doc, I got it. Unfortunately, we're at the end. Um, but I just want to remind everybody to, if you go to juis.education uh, forward slash shop, you can get all the uh, information and, and buy the products and buy the book. Um, you know, again, the website is just juis.education. You can go there and you can find out all the information that you need and let's put the book back up so people won't forget the book you can now the book you can download correct it is a downloadable book um so you can go there and get the book and uh vitamins and minerals from a to z with, with an fo consciousness so please go there get the book read the book i'm gonna start reading mine today and um next time we we we, we have you on dr Jewel, I would be, I will be fully immersed in the book, and I, I will know it by heart, and uh, we can talk more about it. Nothing lost, Doctor J. Again, let's see if we can bring Doctor J. back real quick. Uh, um, there we go. A little technical difficulty. We got it back. Um, and uh, so yeah, so we'll get get the book, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, and uh, please go online and get the book. You can download it from online, so you don't have to even go nowhere. You can stay home, download it immediately, and, and start to read it. Um, pick it up. Uh, uh, Dr. Drew, I want to thank you again for being here. We're at the end of our uh, time allotted to us for this Black History Month celebration, but I couldn't think of a better way for me to end it than to end it with you and 
how we can reverse the trend of that horrible legacy of, of illness in the black community. And a lot of it just starts with getting some sunshine, understanding your consciousness. Okay. Right. Well, one thing I want to say is remember, now it's time to really use this melanin. And this melanin means that we can communicate with high frequency vibrations and light. It's time for us to learn how to use the gamma rays. So we were given that uh, uh, alarm and warning in a very entertaining way here through Black Panther. Panther. We have to go back. We have to study the science and the quantum physics that that movie offered us because we can carry and conduct gamma ray frequency, which is penetrating. It is high intellectual knowledge that can change everything. We have the power. Excellent, 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 excellent. So once again, I want to thank Dr. Drew Puka for being here. Thank you all for watching it. I know there's thousands of people out there watching this right now. Thank you, guys. Thank you, FIT and Torrance and, and her department for being a part of this. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to them too for having me, for hosting me. Tell them thank you. Yes, yes, I yes. It is. Everybody's chiming in. They're just saying thank you. Uh, uh, and so Dr. Cooper was one of my favorite uh, people and favorite doctors. I have three. Also, I have three doctors who I uh, follow for ages. Um, that's Dr. Pukum, Dr. Africa, and uh, Dr. Sadie. Those, those are my favorite people. And I learned all about medicine. And Dr. Pukum always takes it to a whole other level from the spiritual vibrational level, which I which, which I love. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We're done. We're going to disappear. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure to get your vitamins. Get some CMOS. CMOS is very good for you. And uh, stay in the sunshine. Take care, everybody. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Study Black Panther now. Study that yeah. movie.